How to examine a diamond. Hello and welcome to Video Jug. If you're in the market for a diamond, you need to know how to properly look at one so you'll know if you're getting an amazing diamond or an amazing ripoff. And when we say looking, we mean really inspecting the diamond thoroughly so you can appreciate its color, clarity, and cut, and not just how much it twinkles. You will need either a 10 power binocular microscope or a jeweler's loop, locking diamond tweezers, a lint free cloth and an adequate light source with a daylight bulb. Step one, ready the stone. You don't want to mistake an oil smudge for a blemish, so be sure the diamond is as clean as possible first. View the diamond unmounted so you can examine it from all angles. If it's mounted in a setting, have it removed. Step two, tweezers. Jewelers use diamond tweezers to examine diamonds because they have fine grooved tips for traction and have a locking mechanism so the diamonds won't pop out when handling. To pick up a diamond with tweezers, place the diamond face down on a clean, flat surface and position the tweezers on either side of the diamond's widest part, or crown. Gently push forward the tweezers slide lock until it barely catches. You don't want to press too hard or you could damage the diamond's edge or send it flying. Step 3. Naked Eye Inspection Before you use a microscope or jeweler's loop to magnify the diamond, inspect it first by eye. Any major defects should be visible. If you do this after using magnification, you may only see what you remember from the magnified image. Also, move the diamond away from the jeweler's army of bright lights, which will pretty much make frozen spit sparkle. Walk the diamond over to a window to see how it sparkles there by comparison. Step four, magnification and lighting. Diamonds are graded with a jeweler's loop. This is basically a handheld magnifier that is fully corrected so that there is no distortion. Loops, though, are very hard to master, and it's much easier for you to use a binocular microscope instead. If you do use a loop, make sure that it is 10 power, as some jewelers might give you a 5 or 2 power one so you can't see a diamond's flaws as well. The first thing to know about using a jeweler's loop is that you can look through it from either side. They're both the same. Bring the loop right up to your eye in one hand and hold the diamond in the other, positioning the diamond about one inch away from the loop until the entire interior of the diamond is in clear view. Keep your head up as if you were talking to someone so you will not block out the light from hitting the diamond. Ideally, you want the strongest light source to pass through the side of the diamond. When viewing the color of the diamond, use only daylight balanced light as incandescent lights will give off a yellow color. Step five, examination. Some jewelry salesmen will insist that looking at the underside of a diamond is not relevant or factored into a diamond's grading. Nonsense. Any chips on the diamond's underbelly will prevent light from refracting properly and thereby cause a diamond to be less brilliant or to use an industry term, have less fire. When determining the body color of the diamond, place the diamond face down on a white background. Look through the slanting sides going up to its point, the cone of the diamond. Notice how saturated the color is at the thickest points. This is the only way to judge a diamond's true color, as many diamonds will appear white when looked at face up. After you have inspected the diamond and it all looks good, make sure that it comes along with a grading certificate. This is a written document from a creditable gemological lab, like the Gemological Institute of America, GIA, that delineates the diamond's clarity, color, cut, and carat weight, among other things. With this certificate in hand, you know exactly what you're buying. Now all that's left is haggling over the price, getting a detailed receipt, and figuring out how to pay for it. Oh yes, you also have to propose. 